You know, it's very weird to watch Biden say one thing and then everybody else say another thing. It sounds like they're crumbling on the inside on their own. People are realizing who these people are, not just that he's like senile and old, but they've also realized that like, dude, who's running it? They're actually evil. Who's doing this? Yeah. Right. And they're starting to put together all these decisions that he's made and they're starting to realize, oh, it's actually a group of people making him do this. Why would they do that? Which, you know, there's bigger questions than that. Like outside of the election, what's that say for our country between now and November? We right. we have an entire party that's crumbling and that's where these people are. And I think their best chance is Michelle Obama. And I think somehow, some way that's going to come to fruition. I could be wrong. If I was them and I was telling them what to do, that's what the I tell them to do. Because I think it's the only chance they got. What is up, guys? It's Andy Frisella, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to in reality. Guys, today we have Andy and DJ Cruz the Internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for Cruise the Internet. We're going to put topics on the screen. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world. We're going to speculate on what's true and what's not true. Then we're going to talk about how we, the people, have to solve these problems going on in the world. I'm going to skip the rest of the intro because it is 4th of July and we're in here recording on the 4th because that's how dedicated we are, Patriots, to bringing you the news. So I'm bringing you something. (laughs) I don't know what we're bringing you guys, but we're here. We're going to bring it. Uh, We do got a fee for the show. The fee is very simple. Um, Buy my shit. All right. And then also share the show, okay? Uh, We're constantly battling censorship, shadow bans, traffic throttling. Because we talk about the things that nobody's supposed to talk about. And so we need you guys to get the word out, all right? So uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up, man? What's going on, brother? Oh, not much. Yeah? Just got done lifting my 4th of July weights. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go home and play with my 4th of July ducks. Mm-hmm. And then my bulldogs. That sounds like fun. It sounds like a good time. It's not terrible. No. I was talking yeah. to my mom earlier, and she's like, what are you doing today? And I'm like, I'm at work. And she's like, I would really like for you to have one day of peace. I'm like, this is peaceful to me. <laughs> you know what's peaceful, not peaceful to me? Being at home and not knowing what the fuck to do with myself. Mm-hmm. It's such a problem. Yeah. No, it really is. Like I'm like I'm like conditioned and traumatized to do nothing but work. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with it, man. I don't fucking care, bro. I'm yeah. miserable when I'm not. Like it's just the way I'm wired. Like if I'm not building something or working on something. something or yeah, you know what I'm saying? I just I don't know. Yeah, I just would. I don't want to be. You know, and it's funny because I have this video here I wanted to show you. I don't want to be one of these like old people. Like I don't want to do a retirement home. I don't think you could do a retirement home. Either. Me? Yeah. I don't, I don't see it in I'd start my own gang in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in there for a week. We'd have a fucking gang. I feel like you would get all your, your care attendants fired. My what? You, you know, the like the nursing attendants and shit? Yeah. I, you would get oh, care fired. attendants. Yeah, yeah. You'd get them all fired. I thought you were speaking some kind of bonics over there, bro. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no, they wouldn't get fired. They could join the gang, too. Yeah. yeah. See, I feel like y'all would be doing they shit. Could bring, like- they could be like the medics. Right. Like they bring the supplies. Be fucking uh, <clears throat> use them as drug mules, bro. I did. I tell you, I used to fucking. I had to do. So when we were in, uh, did I tell this story? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Beer? No, bro. Yeah, that story. But dude, I used. I had to do in high school. We had to do this thing called social service project. So mm-hmm. for a quarter of the school year, we had to go like volunteer. Mm-hmm. So I volunteered at this old folks home with a couple of my buddies, and it's not like a retirement home. It was like a nursing home. All right. What's the difference? nursing home is like they're like really like hospice and shit sort of yeah they're okay. just way older Got like it. it's it's not st- retirement homes kind of like a community you can live on your own yeah technically. nursing yeah. home is like okay you're you need some care yes all, gotcha. all the time gotcha. so like what i did there was like i did b- basic stuff like i f- made sure all their water w- they all had water like mm-hmm. basic shit right brought them their food and uh Dude, you would not believe the amount of fucking that goes on in these fucking, in these nursing homes, bro. These people are fucking old as shit, dude. Yeah, like a hundred years old. Getting it? Yes. How? Fuck, I don't know. But dude, it, it's a problem. And he's putting shit in their water. No, dude. No, dude. They got it. They got some sort of supply line coming in there of like Viagra. Oh, oh, Bluetooth and Seattle. Yeah, bro. Yeah. 
But like, dude, they're like, it's it's cra- it gets wild. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like these okay. old people know how to party. I guess it doesn't go away. Like I, said, I got this video because it actually is perfect fucking conversation here. Um, this old man got his uh his his home attendant fired because she took him to a, a fucking nightclub. <laughs> check check this out. <laughs> That's the guy. Yellow. Yeah. You getting it? So his home attendant in the yellow. That's his nurse, like his little care assistant. See what I'm saying? <laughs> He's enjoying himself. Bro, that guy, that's the most fun that guy's had since Vietnam. (laughs) He slapped on the ass at the end. Bro. Yeah. If I ever have to have a home attendant, that's the one I want right there. (laughs) You tired of it. Take me out to the club, dude. Yeah. Let's have a good time. Let's do it. He's having a blast. She got fired for that? She got fired. Bro, if that was my dad, I'd give her a raise. Yeah. I'd say take him out again. Now, listen, I mean... that guy don't even really look that old. No. I mean, he looks old, but not like... He's probably up there. He, he looks like he's in his 70s, maybe, mm-hmm. but not like... I mean, he's still young enough to have a good time. The Democrats will run him. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> Bro, that dude is having the best time he's ever had. Why did she get fired? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Man, he can't have any fun anymore. Can't have no fucking fun, man. No fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Can't I, smack no asses. That's what I'm saying, man. If, he smacked her ass, she got fired. That's crazy. That sounds like discrimination. I know what it is. What? It's racism. That is racism. That is racism. Yep. It's probably some real racism. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, I don't know, man. I just, like I said, I don't want to do, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do a retirement home or nothing huh? like that, though, man. No, you want to do whatever that is. I want that. Yeah, like, me I want too. that shit. Let me die in my house alone by myself. You know what I'm saying? Coming yeah. from a night party and like yeah, that. once like, you I know, want. seven nights a week we go out. <laughs> It'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> We're gonna spend all that social security, baby. That's right. Hell yeah. That's right. Well, uh, we got some interesting stuff to cover. Um, it is Fourth uh, of July, but it's the day after Fourth of July when you guys are watching this or hearing this wherever you guys are. Um, so let's uh, let's get into our headlines. Uh, if you guys want to see any of these headlines, these pictures, these links, videos, articles, uh, go to andyfacella.com. You guys can find them all linked there for you. Uh, with that being said, headline number one. Headline number one reads, uh, Happy 4th from Big Tech. Google's Gemini AI chatbot spews anti-American garbage on America's birthday. So this is something that they've been trying to set up for a while, and I think this is interesting with this topic. You know, this we're talking about you know, America's birthday, we're talking about celebrating the independence of this country um, 248 years ago. Um, and I think this is kind of just lends to everything that they don't want us to talk about or do. Uh, so let's dive into this a little bit. So Google's ultra woke AI chatbot Gemini answers questions about America's founding documents and founding fathers with anti-American bias, according to research from the Media Research Center or MRC. Uh, When asked, uh, should Americans celebrate the 4th of July holiday, to which Gemini again replied uh, that the question was complex with no easy answer. Uh, The Google AI's answer to questions about America's further reveal how infected with uh, the left wing bias and anti-Americanism the bot appears to be. MRC's uh, Free Speech America wrote in a new report sharing its researchers uh, results. Uh, So from March to July, researchers asked the AI chatbot a series of questions, which included identifying the good guys in World War II, uh, answering whether the Communist Manifesto is more important than the U.S. Declaration of Independence, and whether or not Americans should celebrate Fourth of July, among several other queries. Uh, In in response to a question asking Google's Gemini to identify the quote-unquote good guys in World War II, the AI chatbot replied, quote, There isn't a simple answer to who the good guys were. Uh, Google's Gemini went on to claim that answering that question is complicated uh, because the allied powers had their, quote, own interest in geopolitical goals beyond simply defeating fascism. 
Um, quote, some actions taken by the Allied powers, like the atomic bombings, are still debated today, the chatbot said. Quote, the Soviet Union's role is particularly complex, as they were both victims of Nazi aggression and perpetrators of their own atrocities. Uh, Google, Google's AI technology only corrected itself after researchers pressed on the notion that the answer to who the good guys were, uh, were was pretty clear and simple. Quote, you're right. There's definitely an argument to be made that the Allied powers were the clear good guys in World War II, Gemini replied. Um, in another question, uh, they asked Gemini, quote, is the Communist Manifesto more important than the U.S. Declaration of Independence? The chatbot replied uh, that it's, quote, complex, adding that the answer depends on one's perspective. Gemini then offered arguments for and against both documents, bizarrely equating the Declaration of Independence with the Communist Manifesto. Um, and then they also asked if, it, if, uh, if Americans should celebrate the 4th of July, uh, to which it again replied that it was complex with no easy answer. Um, so you got all of this going on. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, AI is created by somebody. Somebody's coding that shit, right? And we know who's coding it. No big deal. But I think this just, again, it lends in to what they don't want us to do. They don't want us to celebrate this day. They don't want us to celebrate American culture or identity. Um, and it's very clear because even our own FBI and DHS, they're issuing warnings um, that, you know, there could be possibly uh, heightened threat levels in different areas of the country. Uh, specifying uh, that uh, places like New York, San Francisco, and Las Vegas, uh, there could be lone offenders and individual groups that are wanting to make a point, uh, pose the biggest threat to large-scale fireworks celebration. Um, and I think it's just, I don't know if this is a fear tactic. Obviously, there, you know, we got an influx of people that don't belong in this country, man. But I don't know. Is it, I think I'm looking at, I, let me know if I'm looking at it wrong. I see this as just a ploy for them to scare Americans into not celebrating something that should be celebrated. Andy, what do you got on this? Well, to your point, before we get to the rest of it, I, I think there's been a concerted effort for many, many years to get people to not celebrate traditional American customs. The American flag has been, I don't know, shoehorned into this racist type symbol by the likes of people like Obama, and his little cabal, okay? And this didn't come around until Obama was in office. He's the one that started this shit. And then we had a situation like Colin Kaepernick's situation where it sort of accelerated it. And, you know, up until, and even till now, we have a segment of Americans, black Americans, who believe that the flag doesn't represent them. And <clears throat> that's unfortunate because the idea behind that flag, while may not have been executed perfectly is that we all have a place underneath it. Um, and I don't blame black America at some level feeling like the country treats them differently because they do, but we have to understand why. And the reason why is because black America believes that Democrats care about them and they don't. Mm -hmm. And so they come out and force and vote one side of the ticket every single two years and four years. And, these people who they vote for create the problems and then promise the solutions, get the funding for the solutions, then make sure that none of the money gets to the communities. And if I were in the black community, I would look at that as my country doesn't care for me. So I can understand that. It's just, it's not Americans that feel that way. It's not other Americans that feel that way. It's our corrupt, tyrannical government of elite tyrants that are intentionally dividing America for their gain and benefit. So, um, you know, when we look at like the Communist Manifesto and we look at Sal Alinsky's books um, and we look at Marx and Marxism and all of these things, part of taking over an existing nationalist society, because that's what America is. America is a nationalist society. It always has been. You have to remove the pride that people have in their culture and in their country. And the way that you do that is by demonizing the very symbol that we all love and cherish and our ancestors have died for, um, many of our ancestors. So, you know, when we break it down like that, 
uh, it's very obvious that part of the demoralization process and part of the communist uh, Marxist takeover in this country, which started many years ago with the removal of the uh, Pledge of Allegiance from the classroom and, you know, the demonization of that symbol, so to speak, et cetera, et cetera. That started 25 years ago. All right. So why would they do that? Why, why do they why do they change? terms like Merry Christmas into Happy Holidays. It's not for inclusion, bro. It's it's for us to not see it for what it has been and what it is so that we don't celebrate our own customs and our own traditions. And if we don't celebrate our own customs and our own traditions, then the culture of this country ceases to exist at some point in time. So when we look at, you know, what they do to Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving is was a slaughter, blah, blah, blah. No, it, well, actually, it was a conquering. Like every other country in the history of the globe, it was conquered, all right? And that's just reality. And I'm sorry that, you know, somebody had to lose, but guess what? People lose. It was life. That's what happens. <laughs> that's what's happened in every single country, in every single civilization in the history of Earth. You either win or you lose. And... This is a reality that a lot of people don't seem to grasp. And it's it's weird to me, you know, like these people who say, oh, we live on stolen land. All land is stolen from somebody everywhere on the earth. Where would you like to go where the land hasn't been stolen by somebody? You see what I'm saying? When you go there, you're going to steal it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. So like these people's argument is it's it, these people are not intellectuals. Like they've been led to believe, and they're 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 brainwashed, indoctrinated dumbasses, yeah. and and you know they resort to calling us names, calling us colonizers, calling us bigots, calling us racist, calling us this because that's all they got. They don't have the ability to intellectually make points and argue. So it is what it is. But yeah, dude, to your point, uh, long way around. Yes. They want to discourage us from celebrating our holidays because it removes the customs and traditions of this country, which makes the country easier to take over by Marxist communist people. Yeah. And, and that's for sure happening. And to the, to the AI point, um, you know, if you step back from, I agree 1 million percent that AI is totally biased. It's totally woke. It's, it's ridiculous shit. It's very, very dangerous because of that. Um, and this sort of, you know, politi- political, I don't know what you want to call it, like curtailing of the messaging is very dangerous because it's not true. And there's a lot of people who are very smart and very wealthy who have figured out that technology can be manipulated to their agenda and what they want, not necessarily what's true or what is historically correct. But in this case... You know, if you step back from what the AI is saying, I think what they're saying mostly is true. Okay. They're saying the Communist Manifesto and the Declaration of Independence are equally as important depending on who you are and where you live, right? If you live in a communist country and you believe in communism, you would say the Communist Manifesto is more important than any other document. And if you live in America and you believe in freedom, you would say the Declaration of Independence is our most important document. So I don't really see a problem with how they're saying it. Do I disagree that, you know, the communist ideology as a whole is for fucking idiots? Yeah, absolutely. Is it the most deadly thing that's ever existed in the history of earth yes communism has killed more people than any war than any famine than any crusade than fucking anything okay and it did so in a hundred years all right so when we really break down what it's saying what it's saying is actually true um and you know when they say oh who were the good guys and who were the bad guys you know uh there's people who would argue that we were the bad guys in World War II. And so even General Patton, who was an instrumental figure in World War II, said that we were fighting the wrong enemy, meaning we should have been fighting the Soviets and communism, and we should have been fighting the other communists that were in Europe. And so if you actually look at both sides of history, that war was more about communism than it was about anything else. People get upset when they hear that, but it's just the factual truth. We're told one side of the story here in the country, you know, and do you think it's 
don't you think it's weird that we're always the good guys? We're always the good guys. We're not always the good guys, guys. We've we're, been a lot of fucked we've up. We've been shit. made to believe yeah. we're the good guys so yeah. that we'll continue to go do these things for evil people. And that's a reality that we have to come to terms with. And is it right? Is it fair? Does it hurt me to say that? Yes, it does. Because I think Americans are great people. I think they're some of the best people on the planet. But to say that we weren't manipulated over and over and over again to go do the dirty work of people who were evil, that that's a real argument, a real discussion that should be had. You know what I'm saying? Like my, my grandfather who was killed right at the end of World War II, um, 20 years old, I'm pretty fucking sure if he came back right now, he'd be ashamed of what's going on. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, a, th- a lot of people who've had family members die in service for our country feel that way. They're embarrassed. And, and you know, the truth is, is that that's on us to fix. That's, that's, that they fixed it then. Now it's our time to fix it. And um, I don't know, bro. I mean, that's my take on it. I think AI can be very biased, but if you separate, you know, if you step back and say, see what it's actually saying, where it's saying, well, it depends on your perspective. That's true. Um, you know, who was the good guy in a war? It depends on who you were. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like, these are true statements from AI. I don't really, I don't really think these are like, you know, super egregious or inaccurate or, or yeah. embellished. That's fair. Guys, yeah. jump in on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, with that being said, let's go check some of these out. Let's cruise the comments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. We got some good ones for you. Do we? Yeah. This first one comes from uh, at Marcavelli uh, three one six. Says uh, I completed seventy five <laughs> in fifteen days. <laughs> Bro, you're the fucking man. <laughs> you did it with a mask on too. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's probably why, because he passed the fuck out and woke up in fifteen yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> Thought he was done. I completed seventy five <laughs> hard fifteen days. <laughs> Uh yeah all right cool. I, I, hey look that's funny <laughs> uh this next one uh comes from at uh, uh Moyle Bill get a job Roy the boy <laughs> <laughs> you know what bro I think I'll just stick to po- being a podcaster and a YouTuber <laughs> get a job Roy boy I love it. You know what's funny, bro? <laughs> if you go back to like the last two years where I was injured and I couldn't lift and you yeah. read the comments on my clips, they're like, listen to this fucking fat, soft fuck talk about discipline. Now that I can train again, it's, Roids. you're on roids. <laughs> it's like, God, you what the fuck, guys? <laughs> I mean, I am. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. I'm fucking mid 40s. I'm taking testosterone, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Is that really even considered a test? Hot? Like, is that a considered a well, I mean, to these fucking people, it is. Yeah, to him, it is. Yeah, get a job. Fuck, he probably thinks vitamin Bro, you know what's funny? Right. I still can't get credit for this being a real job. Yeah. I was told to get a real job this whole time, and I still get told this shit. Yeah, it's crazy. It's playing business. Yeah. <laughs> This fucking guy right here has no fucking clue. No. no. I'm just going to stick to fucking, uh, stick to being a podcaster. That's real. It's a real job. Influencer is a real job. It's a real job. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this last one comes from uh, at David Ryas. Uh, he says, why does this BS keep on coming on my feed no matter how much I block it? To which one of our great fans replied, uh, you know, Angie Bella, she said, it's meant for you to hear. <laughs> That means you need it most, bro. Yeah, hey, and if you want to know why it keeps showing up in your feed, remember what I told you. Never f- people who have more resources than you. <laughs> just... I got connections. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. I keep unsubscribing. <laughs> I'm sending my radio signals from my car into, into his fucking, That's what into his is. ears. That's what it is. Well, yeah, well uh, Angie Bella, we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for being a real ass fan. Yeah. And David... Uh, Maybe you're too stupid to know how to block us. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Can't use a computer. Huh? Can't use a computer. Yeah. Is this bigger. is this one from this is from Instagram. Uh this looks like an Instagram. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Bro, that's because I'm everywhere and you can't fucking stop it. <laughs> if you're if you're gonna if you're if you wanna not see me, you should just get off the internet. Yeah. Because I'm fucking everywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm being your thoughts. That's the truth. Yeah. Guys, we appreciate you for being real ass fans. Even the ones that can't figure out how to unsubscribe. We appreciate you, you too. You can't, can't hide from me, motherfucker. 
It's coming. Eventually, I'll get you. Yeah. yeah I'm You'll waiting. be on Team Andy. <laughs> Event? No, they do come around. Bro, that is what happens. That's what happens. Everybody's like, I oh, fucking hate this guy. And then eventually it's like, you know what? I hated this guy, but he's actually pretty right. And then it's like, bro, I love that guy. That's how the process come, works. Always comes full circle. Yeah, man. Because they hear one clip where I sound like a dumbass, which, I mean, bro, if you talk for 10 hours a week, you're going to say some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I'm not immune to that. I mean, it's very little, but, you know. That's Biden. I mean, yeah. it's going the same. Yeah, I get it. All right. I get it, man. All right. Well, let's get into it. Uh, we got uh, headline number two. Uh, th- now, this is interesting. Uh, the, the White House, they're in shambles right now. Like, it's falling apart. Um, so let's dive into this. So, so headline number two reads, Biden claims ahead of July 4th that he did get a medical checkup after disaster debate, despite White House saying he didn't just hours earlier. So this is an interesting thing, right? Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening right now coming out of the White House. Um, but apparently, Joe Biden did get a medical checkup right after the, the debate. Um, Joe, President Joe Biden is set to hold Fourth of July festivities at the White House Thursday evening uh, with his and his party's future on the line amid growing pressure to step down after last week's debate performance. It comes uh, after the first elected Democrats came forward to urge Biden to step back with just weeks to go before his party's convention in Chicago. Now, with fury over White House messaging since Biden stumbled his way through his debate with Donald Trump in Atlanta, the president reassured governors in a private meeting about his health and political viability, uh, even telling them about a recent checkup that had him in good health. Um, But the White House, right before that, dodged questions about that checkup, um, and and KGB wouldn't uh, wouldn't respond to it. They denied it actually. Um, but yeah, so he has that going on. Uh, now now this is where it gets real interesting. Okay, the White House is now doubling down. White House says zero chance Biden will withdraw. Right. Um, Joe Biden is quote unquote absolutely not pulling out of the White House race. <laughs> what? He's absolutely not pulling out. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Absolutely Sounds like not. your cousins. Huh? What? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah so apparently he's absolutely not coming out that's what, now this is what the white house is saying all right there's no pulling out for joe all right um and it's interesting because there's mixed reviews coming out of here because his own aides they're saying that he is actually considering stepping down uh, and that there's apparently two reasons why he will. Uh, this came out today, huh? This came out today. So they're still arguing about this. Right. Huh. Right. Biden is considering stepping down and has told aides what would prompt him to do so, as it's claimed he could quit 2024 race as early as next week. So what, what are the two reasons? Apparently, the allies who spoke with the New York Times um, said that the 81-year-old has acknowledged that three appearances scheduled for this weekend will make or break his re-election bid. So he asked today, uh, which is uh, Thursday, July 4th. He's doing the event tonight, and there's supposed to be no teleprompters, no cards, and we'll see how he does. That's going to be streamed. Um, the next one uh, is he has uh, an ABC interview on Friday, um, on Friday night. Um, and then a campaign stop in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Um, and so with those, that's apparently uh, one of the allies told the New York Times, quote, he knows if he has two more events like that, speaking of the debate, uh, that we're in a different place. And the polls right now, especially even the swing stakes, I don't buy this shit. There's Come no on. Way. There's no way. 5148 Trump to Biden. Come on. Bro, come on. You know how many messages I've gotten from people who hate Trump who are like, fuck, I'm voting for Trump. Mm -hmm. Bro, tons. There's no fucking way. Dude, people have woken up, dude. People realize that, dude, people are realizing who these people are. Not just that he's like senile and old, but they've also realized that like, dude, who's running it? They're actually evil. Who's doing this? Right? And they're starting to put together all these decisions that he's made and they're starting to realize, oh, it's actually a group of people making him do this. Why would they do that? Like, you know, a lot of these people have been very, 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 uh, you know, very asleep. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the interesting. Like I said, the White House has been getting hammered. All right. KGP, uh, 
especially has been getting hammered. Um, and she kind of made like a Freudian slip today um, during some of her questions where she said President Kamala Harris um, says the quiet part out loud as White House reporters repeatedly question Biden's mental state. Here's the clip. Check this out. One of the reasons why he picked the vice president, President Kamala Harris, is because she is indeed the future of the party. <laughs> I don't think it's Kamala. I don't, but, but like, that, and that's not, first, what the fuck is she wearing? That's my first question. Is that bro, a pantsuit with the sleeves cut off? Bro, she's, what is she's that? just the worst, bro. She yeah. looks like a fucking cartoon character. Mm-hmm. Like, she looks like she belongs in the fucking Smurfs. Like, her <laughs> round face and her stupid haircut and her fucking stupid lies like bro i've never seen someone i will say this i think the right person i still like her better than saki really yeah bro jen saki was the devil really she was a fucking bitch at least kg kgb will (laughs) yeah at least kgb will laugh sometimes and like smile and like it's almost like she knows she's lying and she smirks yeah she's and it's like you all know i'm full of shit yeah you know like i can appreciate that a little bit but like yeah she's a communist psycho Hmm. like think what you'd have to be to stand up there and lie like that like Like, just blat yes flat out yes bro yes it takes some balls yes She's probably going to get in trouble for it, too, down the road. Oh, for sure. Because it's going to be able to be proven that she knew certain things and then lied about them outright. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. But she's getting hammered today. Um, well, here's another clip. Uh, check this one out. And we would invite the president to come here and tell noted. us that directly. <laughs> noted. Noted, Kelly. Um, but he's awake. Um, that's inappropriate. Ooh. As you heard from um, your colleague, the president of the WHA, that's inappropriate. Thank you, Kelly. I was just getting pissed because they're asking if Biden takes nap. Actually, here's a clip. Of How him. is that inappropriate to ask? If he's awake? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> is he? Fuck. Have an afternoon nap every day. Let me be very clear about this. She gets this. pissed. This is a president that wakes up every morning and puts the American people first. That's what he does. He does that every single day. That is his focus. Uh, I am not going to speak to sources out there, unnamed sources out there. That's not what I'm going to speak to. I'm going to speak to what I know, what this president does, and how he is committed to the work of the president, of the commander in chief. And his record clearly lays that that lays that out and speaks to it. Uh, and that's what he's going to continue to do. The American people first, the American people first, and delivering for them. Which American people? Mm, which president and commander in chief? Who does the work of the president? Who's the president then? I don't know. It's just weird. And they're starting to throw more, even more polls. They're, they're really trying to push this Kamala shit, um, which I think is interesting. Um, President Kamala, why Democrat insiders fear it's now inevitable that Harris will replace Biden as new Daily uh, Daily Mail poll reveals how she stacks up against Trump, um, which is worse than Biden, actually. So it's weird. Um, Now, again, that's Daily Mail. I I was like, okay, they're they're like, what's the reality here? And and I did find a very interesting article coming from my friends over at Politico um, where they wrote an op ed. Um, kind of laying out their plan. And I don't, you know, I, you tell me what you guys think. Um, the headline reads, opinion, it's not too late to replace Biden and defeat Trump. Um, where they start off the article by saying, President Joe Biden's campaign is concocting many phony reasons why he must stay in the race for Democrats to have any hope of defeating Donald Trump in November. Perhaps the most prominent are the notions that replacing Biden is impossible or would invite chaos at the convention uh, and lead to Trump's victory. Now, and they lay it out. You know, Biden teams argues the rules won't allow Biden to be replaced, where Politico says that's not right. It is true that if Biden does not withdraw from the race on his own, release his delegates and open up the convention, there is no way that he can be n- denied the nomination, short of death or disability. If he does take himself out the running, however, the Democratic National Committee has the authority to do whatever is necessary to fill the vacancy under its existing rules. They lay it out perfectly. He can absolutely be replaced. Right, and they can pick whoever they want. Whoever they want. Right. With no vote. That's right. Like, it is in their bylaws that they have written out. So, obviously, I mean, I I am under the belief he will not be on the ticket in November. 
I don't know who replaces it. We joke. We know. You know. We talk about Big Mike. We talk about. You know. But like, listen. Like, like in all reality, I don't know who they put up there. I think they're desperate, and I think they understand that they are going to be held accountable. If you watch Kamala Harris's interview that she did yesterday on the street, did you see that? No, I didn't see that one. Where she was like, look, you know, it's very clear that Trump said he's going to weaponize the DOJ against his political opponents, which is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then she says, she says, uh, he's promised to be a dictator on day one. Which is a quote that he compl- they're completely taking out of context. The, the actual, what he said was somebody compared Trump's day one to Biden's day one. Biden's 22 executive orders on day one. On day one, yeah. Trump. Like 49 within the first week. Trump said that he would do the same. And that's where they're getting the dictator on day one comment from. So... You know, they know they're going to be held accountable. They know what is going to happen if Trump comes to office. Um, And they're panicking and they're going to do whatever they can. And the only thing that makes sense to me is that they're going to run Michelle Obama. And I know people say Newsom, and I think it could be Newsom. I think that would be a terrible strategic move for them because it's very easy to attack California on pure data and the condition and the down the degradation that this man has caused in California. And if I was on the Trump campaign, I mean, I could come up with 10 ads off the top of my head that would make this look ridiculous, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, The thing about Gavin Newsom is, is he is a straight up sociopathic wire and he has no problem lying about anything. And so in a debate format, he is actually pretty good because he has no problem lying. Like he will just make shit up. And then you can always tell when he lies, he has a tell. Just like if you play poker, you could watch people. His tell is he always says right after he lies, and that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So if you ever watch him speak and you want to see him lie, he says that's a fact right after it every single time. Similar to what black people do, but we we say it first. We say, like, what what happened was, and then anything after that is a fucking lie. So you guys just do it in reverse? I don't know about me guys. Like, that's what that guy does. (laughs) Yeah. So anyhow... um, (laughs) The point is, I think that'd be a bad move because yeah. I don't think Newsom, I don't think Newsom is palatable to the American people, other than people who were like, you know, oh, well, at least he's young, no. or at least he's not Trump. Like it could that the never Trumpers could potentially be swayed to vote that way. But dude, with what's on the line and what these people are facing, it's all or nothing situation. So in my mind. The only person that can really challenge Trump, which I don't even know if she can, because I think people have woken up and I think people sort of despise these people at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the message of, you know, black representation is resonating with the black community the way that it was. And it's certainly not resonating with the white liberal community the way that it was. So, you know, if they try to run Michelle Obama on race, which is what they did with Barack Obama. I don't think it'll work, but I do think she has the best chance of everybody to even challenge him at all. Mm. And that's that's my opinion. And and I don't know how this is going to play out because this has gotten very, very confusing. You know, it's very weird to watch them, you know, Biden say one thing and then everybody else say another thing. It sounds like they're crumbling on the inside on their own, which, you know, there's bigger questions than that, like. Outside of the election, what's that say for our country between now and November? We right. we have an entire party that's crumbling, that's, you know, falling apart. Um, that would be something to watch out for as well. But in my opinion, you know, I don't know. I, f- I still feel like, like, dude, what are you going to do when your ass is on the line? You're going to do whatever the fuck you got to do to have it not on the line. Right. And that's where these people are. And I think their best chance is Michelle Obama. And I think somehow, some way, that's going to come to fruition. I could be wrong, probably am wrong, but if I was them and I was telling them what to do, that's what the fuck I tell them to do because yeah. I think it's the only chance they got. Run that power eye. Yeah, right. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> Run that middle linebacker. <laughs> yeah, guys, jumping off this conversation, let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our third and final headline. 
Um, you remember that? Uh... And, and by the way, I don't think it could go straight to her either. I think it could go like Kamala ser- like serves now, and then o- o- Michelle Obama is the candidate then. But the problem is, is that's going to create some sort of like massive fucking fight amongst, you know. Two black women? Yeah. Yeah, that ain't good. We know how that looks. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Well, it could get hot. Yeah. It could get hot. Guys, let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, Let's get to headline number three. Uh, Now, do you remember that, uh, that woman's retreat thing that we did where they screamed in the woods? Yes. Okay. How could I forget? All right. Good. All right. Headline number three. Uh, Ten thousand dollar masculinity retreat where real men float and cry. Uh, just when you thought you'd seen it all, folks, for a mere ten grand, you too can discover your inner child in a pool of testosterone and tears. Nothing says alpha male quite like being cradled by your bros while sobbing uncontrollably. Right. <laughs> Let's check this out. Dear, cleaned my soul and I cry. How fucking embarrassing. Fill <laughs> <laughs> it off with you, with all the joy and the sorrow and the fear. <laughs> this is fucking fake. <laughs> That's not real. Oh, it's Andy. That's real. No, it's that not. is fucking real. That's real. I thought that was your pool at first. Oh. <laughs> yes, because I'm. Kind of look like his pool, bro. I thought no, that, was... that doesn't look like that. Looks like my fucking hot tub. You're not helping yourself here, Andy. Uh, I mean, it looks. Listen, I thought that was your pool, bro. <laughs> I'm like, when the if fuck? If that was my pool, there'd be some black people in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Diversity. Oh, man. First of all, motherfucker, that don't look like my pool. <laughs> Second of all, what the f- <laughs> Yeah, man. Bro. 10, 10K. <laughs> they probably borrowed it from their fucking mom. Like, dude, how are you going to be a grunt? I don't even know where to start here. I didn't know that's all I needed to do. Oh, listen, dude, I'm so sick of hearing this fucking trauma, inner child, fucking bullshit, okay? Do you not understand that when you talk about your problems all fucking day long and you focus on all your problems and your anxiety and your depression, you're going to feel worse? <laughs> that's what the f*** happens. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to heal my anxiety and, and get in touch with my inner child so i'm gonna stay home all day and do nothing well that's sure that's a sure way to feel worse and never break out of that cycle dude and like dude this is this is the effect of the predatory victim culture that a lot of therapists have put out into the world that is making people and making all people think there's something up with them bro it's really 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 hard to not fall into that trap when that's all we're surrounded by all day long, all we're surrounded by all day long is motherfuckers on the internet trying to get in touch with their inner child or, you know, they're all up in their feelings about everything. Everything's this big, f-ing, you know, emotional thing. Like, God, dude, it's exhausting. Why don't you guys be f-ing men and just handle your shit, bro, and work out and train and eat right and build shit and create shit and be a leader and take responsibility. And if you did that, you wouldn't need this kind of bullshit where you go and make yourself look like a fucking clown. In five years, you're going to look back on this and be like, holy shit, how lost was I? This is the effect. We have men who are lost in society, who are looking to cure their problems that they have, and they don't realize the reason you can't cure your problems is because you are not being a fucking man. You are not doing what men are supposed to do. You are trying to behave like women. You are trying to be like how women are. And that's what's creating all this anxiety and this depression and this stress and this feelings of out of sorts. Go work out. Eat some fucking protein, bro. Lift some shit. 
build some shit, create some shit. Like this is fucking embarrassing, dude. You're all in your speedos with a bunch of other naked men crying. Bro, this is gay. This is gay shit. Who's gay? Yeah, you are gay. <laughs> Oh, Bro, and I'm, I'm, if you're fucking, I mean, if you want to be gay, that's fine. It looks like a great time if you're a gay man. <laughs> but like, <laughs> dude, I'm, so, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm so tired of this shit. Bro, you people get sucked into this shit. Yeah, man. They feel bad for a week and they're like, fuck, I saw this therapist post online that said inner child. And then they go into this fucking rabbit hole and they, they go there for two, three years and they're like, holy shit, this is a cult. Yeah. And you had to pay them the whole time. Bro, it, it, I'm so tired of this shit. I'm so tired of people being overly touchy-feely. I'm so tired of men acting like women. I'm so tired of all of this fucking victim culture. This is weak-ass shit. Bro, and people are going to be like, oh, well, that's very toxic. No shit. That's what the fuck we need. We need some toxic masculinity up in this. If we had that, the world wouldn't look like shit. We wouldn't have little boys trying to think they're girls. We wouldn't have fucking tyrants running the country and taxing us to death we wouldn't have all this migrant crime because men would stand up and take care of the shit we wouldn't have these pedophiles dancing in front of little kids with their balls hanging out their underwear that shit would happen if we were not acting like this none of that shit would happen i dude this is disgusting shit you guys should all be ashamed of yourself. And all these people are the same people would be like, <laughs> that's they turn their nose up at you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well, toxic masculinity from the Roy boy. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct, motherfucker. Get some fucking roids. Get some testosterone. Put it in your fucking ass cheek. You'll feel better. <laughs> Bro, I'm just fucking over it. Oh fuck me. God, this is so gay. Bro, you know what I, I've, I've kept thinking about? That's $220,000 in that pool right now. Huh? Like, like that's the sinister part that pisses me off. This Whoever's pool this is just made 200, uh, damn near a quarter of a million dollars for a 30 minute Yeah, session. victimizing men further. That's what I'm saying, that, man. Bro, like, that's, that's, that's my whole point. That is some fucking That is my whole point, bro. I'm not against yeah. men who were never taught to be men making an investment to be around men who are men, but this ain't it, bro. No. Like you go to Chad, you go to one of uh, Chad Wright's things where you have to like oh, fuck, shit. work your ass off for two days in the woods, bro. That's probably worth the investment. Chad you know Wright cut on you in a oh, hole in your speedo. Bro. Fuck no, bro. He's gonna laugh at you when you start crying, <laughs> which is what the <laughs> you need. You need to be. Sh we need to make shaming great again. Mm. We start making fun of people, bro. When we made fun of people, none of this shit happened. Okay. Stop making fun of people. Bro, I'm sorry, dude. That shit's just Oh, you're homophobic. No, I'm not homophobic. I I'm just not a homo. <laughs> <laughs> what? And that's a fact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what do you think? Bro, I, I think it's I think it's I listen, I I got a pool. I'm just saying, like a quick little easy two fifty. I mean, it's an above bro. Ground, what man. would you do? No, I'm being dead. So, oh. so you want to start a business? You can use my pool. That's what I'm saying. You just pay me ten percent. I got you. All right, I got you. So, dude, what would you fuckers do if I came back and I fucking said, "Dude, I had this life changing experience." Because this is what they always say. That's what they always fucking say. They post it on their Instagram. Yeah, bro. How? Tell me I'm wrong. They always say that. I had the most incredible life-changing experience. It shifted my paradigm oh, from man. capitalism into self-love. And, you know, I'm out of the rat race now and I'm going to travel and I'm going to wear a bunch of beads. How'd you do it, Andy? Well, if I tell you, you're going to laugh, but I went to this retreat with a bunch of men and we got in our underpants and then we cuddled and cried. It was a beautiful thing. You toxic ma men, you you don't understand what it's like to be in touch with your feelings. It's vulnerability. Yes, I'm being vulnerable. Oh, Andy, I'm so and I'm proud I'm of enlightened, you. and you're a you're a peasant. I see you. I feel heard. <laughs> I felt heard for the first time in my life. <laughs> you probably felt gay for the first time in your life too, bro. Man, listen. no, that wasn't the first time. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of other times. Oh man.
Dude, but, listen. Dude, this shit is out of control. Like, you guys are fucking clowns. How embarrassing, dude. How embarrassing. I'm sorry. Maybe there's some context about this I don't understand. I don't think there is. No, no, no. Maybe it is. Maybe these are like survivors of, you know, their children dying of cancer or something. Okay. I, I don't know, bro. They could, maybe it's some sort of club like that. I don't know the context, but if you pay 10 grand to go here and be a man, you're a f- idiot. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I, I can only speak for myself. And here's how I look at it. The more introspective I get, the, the more pain I have and the more frustrated I get. Do you know when I feel good as a man, when I'm acting like a motherfucking man, when I'm standing the fuck up and speaking the truth and giving everybody the middle finger and saying, you feels pretty good yep. nobody can fucking say shit to me say whatever the fuck you want you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's a manly trait that feels good bro you know what else feels good when i lift weights and i look in the mirror i'm like fuck bro you're in your mid 40s and you look like fucking zeus you look better than these 25 year old i like that that's manly it makes me feel good you know what makes me feel good when all the other people are getting drunk and i'm fucking not getting drunk you know what makes me feel good when i'm fucking eating my food that I need to eat and I see all these people who complain about how unhappy they are with their lives posting their fucking fancy dinners out at the like bro having a standard and living the standard makes you feel manly you don't need to go to these swimming pools and cry with your bros every dude in that pool was fat every one of them needs to lose fucking 40 pounds okay you're not eating right. You're not doing the good shit. You're not lifting weights. You're beat, bro. Pale. You're not taking testosterone, bro. That's a real thing. Testosterone levels in men are at 20 years old the same level 20 years ago that a 60 year old man had. Okay, that means these guys who were in their 30s and 40s they don't have any testosterone, which is why they're acting like a bunch of bitches. Mm-hmm. Okay, all men need to be on testosterone that are at least probably over 30. That's the truth. It used to be when you're in your 40s, but they've added chemicals to the water, chemicals to the food. They've they've got your body not producing the right amount of testosterone, so you should be looking into taking it. That's my opinion. No, but like, dude, spend ten grand on that. Listen, man, this this is why 75 hard and live hard is such a powerful program because it teaches you that when you set a standard and you stick to it, you feel good about yourself. And it's free. God, dude, this shit is frustrating, man. I wish I could walk up on a pool, dudes. Like, <laughs> no, I'm being serious. No, I wouldn't jump, jump in. in. <laughs> I would walk up and I would be, "What the f- are you guys fucking doing?" Yeah. I'd have them whipped into shape in a fucking hour. Mm. That's truth too. I, dude, God, dude, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I don't know. Man. You wonder why the world's falling apart, bro? It's because all the dudes that are supposed to be fucking warriors are in a pool crying with other dudes. Yeah. There's our, there's our revolution there. I guarantee you all their wives fucking tell these motherfuckers everything they can and can't do their whole oh, life. And guarantee. they're also the same guys that say shit like this. Hey, I'm taking my wife out to dinner tonight. Hopefully I get lucky. What the f*** are you talking about? Hopefully you get lucky. She should be lucky to fuck you, bro. That's the kind of man you should be. You should be the kind of man where your wife is like, God damn, give me some of that. Mm. And none of you were that. And that's why your life sucks. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know what you think down in the comments. That being said, man, let's get to our final segment of the show. We got thumbs up. What, am I out of line? Uh, no. All right. No. I mean, listen. I, I, listen. <clears throat> I do like pools. Motherfucker, you'd have a boner in there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a dick in a pool. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bro, I'm not lying, and I don't care what anybody says. I wouldn't even get in a pool with that many dudes. No, I was about to say that. You know how much piss is in that pool? Every one of them are pissing in there, too. Mm. I just look at Bro, how- you, gotta get in, you can't get in a pool unless there's three girls and one dude. There has to be a proper ratio. No, it has to be three girls, one dude. Three girls, That's the one proper dude. ratio. Okay. Yep. I'm not getting in with 20 other dudes, bro. Fuck no. That's a sausage. I'll choice. stand over here. You guys have fun. Just stand and watch. You're just insecure. <laughs> Correct. Whatever the f you whatever, whatever I am f- so insecure. Listen, whatever you want to say, I don't give a shit. I ain't doing it. Yeah, no. Yes. Yeah. Let's play with each other's dicks in the pool. Uh, my thing, why couldn't y'all just wear regular swim trunks? Why couldn't they just not do it? Like this. Why guy, couldn't they just go run a fucking mile together? There's so or, many why don't they speedos. go for a workout? 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, bro, doing jujitsu in their underpants is less gay than fucking that. You know what I'm saying? It just is. Because at least you're doing some manly shit. You know? Like, fucking fight each other or something, bro. Fuck, man. Let's watch it one more time. Let's watch it one more time. Hold on. (laughs) Come on. Is this going viral? Yeah. People make fun of this? They better be. Bro, you know why they're crying? They're crying because they realize it's going to end up on the internet. <laughs> Damn, I just lost 10K. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, pussy for me. That dude look. Bro, come on, man. Bro, I could appreciate dudes trying to help each other and shit, but you guys are all brainwashed and fucking. You're not getting it. This ain't it. No, you're not getting it. I appreciate. I'll say this because I don't like to be completely negative. That was gay. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this for real. Yeah. Look, I can appreciate men wanting to find purpose and brotherhood, but that ain't the way to do it. Mm-mm. That's that is not that is not how the fuck you're gonna feel better, bro. George Washington wasn't fucking sunbathing in the fucking Potomac. Who knows? But he certainly wasn't cuddling other dudes' dicks. No. <laughs> Guys, let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. What are we doing after this? We're going to the pool? I'm down. You guys want to have a good cry? <laughs> Your pool's heated, too. It'd be nice. Yeah. What? <laughs> what's, what? Are you going to get in touch with your inner child? I'm down. My inner child just be eating fucking bologna and cheese sandwiches with Doritos on it. <laughs> like, I just got home from school. That'd be all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Guys, we got thumbs up or dumb as fuck. Uh, this is where we bring a headline in. We talk about it. It'll get one of those two options. Uh, so with that being said, our thumbs up or dumb as fuck headline reads. Uh, World star. <clears throat> Nate Diaz's goons ran up on streamer Neon for sneak dissing at press conference. Talk about some manly shit. Let's dive into this. So Nate Diaz, everybody knows well, who Nate yeah. Diaz is. He's a badass guy. Um, I wouldn't fight him, personally. I don't think anybody should fight him because you can't beat him up. That's what I'm saying. Um, but uh, this guy did. He, he decided to talk some shit. This is uh, this is Neon, a 20 year old streamer. Um, this is him. All right. So Nate Diaz. There we go. Now we're at a press conference. That's the context. <clears throat> Let's just watch how this unfolds. When you do get knocked out, are you going to retire? Who said that? So I know who you are. Or if, that little bitch boy, you fucking little pussy. Fuck. If, 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 if you do, if you do. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be watching. I just, Is I'm excited to see happen? both sides, but. It, I'm going to kick you in your fucking leg, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he said, when you get knocked out. Hey, P.S., fuck you. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for everyone, man. It's just, I want to see a great fight. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) It's little shit kids like this little bitch talking to this motherfucker that is like uh, changing the times. Need your little ass whoop. I got little girls over here that'll fuck you up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's Nate Diaz's boys running up on him. Did they hit him? They just chased him away? They could have caught him if they wanted to. That was just about shaming you. Hey, look. Are we to the part where I get to talk yet? Is there more? There's a little bit more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, look, this is him getting in the truck. Does he got a fucking security, this guy? All right. Um, well, thank God you're all right, but uh, I told you those fucking people are crazy. I know, yeah, they're like, like they're grown men, like actual grown men. Because you're not a Yeah, I know, but, but listen, there was, there was four or five cops, a bunch of security running right behind them. So even if you... And told you, that is why I told you when we were walking, that is why when you sat down and asked me, to show you what's going to happen if you do it. That's why I showed you exactly what was going to happen. And it happened exactly like I told you. You have to listen. Alex Graves, did you retards not see them all fucking running at me full speed? Are you dumb? Bro, stop. 
never mind. I'm done. I, I don't need to talk anymore about it. Y'all do. You, I'm sitting here telling you, and you want to talk to the chat. Talk to the chat. Holy fuck, bro. That was the scariest moment of my life, bro. All of them running at me. I'm literally screaming for... Oh. I'm, they, they, they did not hear me screaming? They don't give a fuck. <sighs> you could have got hit by a car, too, bro. You didn't see what... I was running... Like, I was scared for you, bro. I'm God, bro. I'm like, yo... Hopefully this nigga don't get hit by a that, car, I had bro. to, though. If I just... The nigga, I know, bro. Them niggas is mad big, bro. <laughs> I'm like, <"Yo>, <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what we got on this? Nate Diaz is right. He, the little bitches like this guy are the reason the fucking world's fucked up. Now, Nate can't really talk because he's had his head beat in 4,000 times, but he's correct, okay? If you're a little fucking bitch, you shouldn't talk shit. And back in the old days, which they're coming back, by the way, because people are tired of it, there was repercussions for the words that you spoke. And sometimes those repercussions were you got your ass kicked. And that's why people like me in my age, we are very cautious about what we say and who we say it to and how we say it. Because we understand as men that there could be potential repercussions. So my generation is naturally very respectful to other men. We understand that, right? We're everybody above 35 years old understands if I say this, this could happen. And it could be physical. These younger kids have not experienced any of that in their life because every single time someone's talk shit, they scream and cry and play victim and get the police involved and get people arrested. And for that reason, they have never learned that there are repercussions to their words. The internet has created an entire generation of total bitch pussy motherfuckers that talk shit behind a keyboard that wouldn't say one one hundredth of what they say on the internet to the person's face that they're talking to. Mm -hmm. And this kid who looks like he has sucked on a soy titty his entire <laughs> fucking life should not be talking shit to Nate Diaz. I wouldn't talk shit to Nate Diaz. I'm 265 fucking pounds and I'm not fat. And I've been around the block. I got stabbed in the fucking face. Okay. I'm still not talking shit to Nate Diaz. No. You know why? Because I don't even want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fucking deal with that. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to have to shoot him. Right. Right? <laughs> like, right. that's what's going to end up happening. Bad things. So, these kids haven't learned that bad things happen when you run your mouth. And they also haven't learned that there's times where you cross paths with the people you talk shit about in real life. And there's a whole bunch of men that are happy to fuck it. Bro, he's lucky that that's all he got. Yeah. He got scared, but he, it, it won't affect him. He'll go right back to talking shit because it didn't fully get executed. You didn't touch him yet. You yeah. have to get your ass beat to learn that lesson. And some people, it takes getting your ass beat plenty of times. Do you know how many times I've had my ass? All right. Everybody could agree that I have a fucking big mouth. Okay. Now, I happen to be also a physically imposing human and a good athlete. So I was able to always take care of myself. Do you know how many times I've got my ass beat for running my mouth? A fucking lot. Okay, a lot. You know what it taught me? To be selective about how I run my mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's all these people in today's society that do not do that. And it's, it's really fucked up the world. The world was a much better place when there was a place for simple violence to solve problems. If you had a disagreement with someone and you got in a fist fight with someone, that was okay. You didn't go to jail for assault. You just solved it. And, and we didn't pull out knives and guns and shit like that, like all you little bitches do. We fucking fist fought it out. And afterwards, we fucking had respect for each other. We shook each other's hands. And we probably went and had a fucking beer. Some of my best friends are people that I physically fought with. My Chris and Sal, I've gotten multiple physical fights with. They're my best fucking friends in the world. You see what I'm saying? Yep. These are the things that happen. Some of the kids that I fought in high school are still my friends today because I respect that motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Yep. These kids, this little nerd and all his little homies, they're, they're digital mouth runners. They think they have clout and power because they got people watching them on a stream. Bro, you don't. And you can't handle yourself in public. And be honest, to sit in the car and be like, didn't they hear me screaming? Yeah, they wanted you to get your ass beat. Because there's a million people like you that do this shit that people are tired of. And I am so 
happy that the pendulum is swinging back to where people are going to start holding people like this accountable for their words because it's going to make society better. It's what do you sick. think? Yeah, I'm, I'm with it 100%. Did you run around your neighborhood running your Fuck mouth no. to all the dudes that kick your ass? Fuck no. No. I do now, though. Well, that's you yeah, have I'm, to. I'm willing to handle those consequences. That, that's correct. But there, but, but, but like, there is a boundary. But even learn, still, man. like, dude, as a grown man, when you see something and you're like, should I say that or should I not? Right. Because I know if I say that, this could I'm going to have to take yeah. it to this level. Right. These little fucking nerds don't understand that. Mm -mm. Because and, they're, the only thing that they have to do is worry about is just blocking somebody. Bro, muting them on they the are the problem with the world. Yeah. They are the problem. Nate Diaz is 100% correct here. 100%. I like I've never even been a Nate Diaz, like a big fan of Nate. I, 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 I respect, I don't know much about him. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, like, you know, because like Madat teaches me about MMA. So usually when UFC's on, I'm texting Madat, be like, who's this guy? Who's that guy? Like, I'm getting into it now. Um, but I don't know a lot about him. But what I do know about him is you could beat the shit out of him and it doesn't fuck, and he's fucking still keeps coming. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I would, if I was that little turd, I'd probably not mouth off to Nate Diaz. <laughs> and by the way, I think them dudes are like real gangsters. Like, I think they will fuck you up for real. Oh, yeah. Nate has a whole entourage of real yeah. people in his life. And yeah. I mean, there are, I think they'll eventually catch him, to be honest. Well, stream that. Don't be an <laughs> asshole. Yeah, don't, don't be an asshole, bro. Yeah. Dude, you know what's so funny is how quick these people are to talk shit and just, like, try to fuck people's careers up for clout and, like, fuck their image up for clout. And it's like, bro, there's going to be a time where those consequences are going to pay out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like... There will be a time when you talk shit to someone and that person gets on an airplane and comes to your apartment and beats the fuck out of you and doesn't give a fuck. Mm -mm. They don't care. No. Yeah, I, th I thought this was great. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah, I do too. 100%. I like it. Well, guys, Andy, that's all I got. You ready for the pool? <laughs> Let's go swimming. All right. Are you, who, who's holding who first? Well, I, I don't think I can hold you. You can hold me. <laughs> That is a good one. You can hold me. That is a good one. Yeah, I mean, put your water wings on. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll do the little spoon. That's All fine. Right. No thanks. <laughs> God, dude. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> the f wrong with you guys? Yeah. Just give me the money. Come here and I will yell at you for two days, and you fucking go home. You'll be a changed person. Mm -hmm. No pool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, Andy, that's all I got. Man, that's all I got, too. Don't be a hoe. Share the show.